In this video, I'll be showing you this. It's the Panasonic TX48JZ980 OLED TV. And what I want to do today is to show you around the TV some of the features and benefits that it offers. Just before I start, all I'd normally say is please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just give us a quick thumbs up. Uh, what I do is I normally talk about household appliances. Uh, there's normally a bit of tech in there, cordless vacuums. So just give us a quick subscribe and we'll make a start. I just wanted to thank some of my avid subscribers. These are Ollie, Harry, Seth, Luke, Owen and Ebar987. Thanks a lot for the subscribe lads. So Panasonic have been making OLED TVs for a number of years now, uh, but have predominantly been in the bigger sizes. So it's in the 55, 65 inch and above. Uh, but they've realized, uh, Panasonic have realized as well as other manufacturers, that there is a huge demand for smaller OLED TVs. So this is the first 48 inch OLED TV that Panasonic have produced. Uh, it's not the only one in the range, there are other models in the range, but this will be the main one that Panasonic sell. Uh, so this is part of what they call the JZ980 range. Uh, it is actually, this model is actually available in three different sizes. So it's available in this, the 48 inch, 55 and 65 inch. But all the features and benefits that I show you will be the same across the three models. Although we keep the three sizes in stock, uh, I thought I'd show you the 48 inch because it's a little bit different. It's the, the new one to the range. Uh, but what I wanted to do was just to show you the dimensions of the TV uh, and also the position of the stand because that's normally quite an important factor when buying a TV. So as far as the overall size of the television itself, uh, you're looking at 107 centimeters or 42 inches wide. Uh, from the base, then you're looking at 66 centimeters or around 26 inches. Uh, but as I just mentioned, the, the stand itself, it can actually be put in two different positions. So this is the, the middle point, uh, which a lot of people will tend to use. And the distance between the two feet at the widest point is 53 centimeters. Now the stand we've got it on, okay, it's, it's quite a, I'll be honest, quite an ugly stand. You wouldn't normally sit it on this, uh, but it's just really proving uh, that this is only a, uh, this is quite a slim line stand. So this one is only around 75 centimetres. So you don't need a huge cabinet to sit the TV on. Uh, some people are under the impression that ideally they'll want to match the size of the stand with the TV. Now you can do, uh, but I suppose what Panasonic are, are proving here is that because the feet are very close together, then you don't need a huge stand to go with it. Uh, but as I just mentioned, you've actually got two different positions that you can put the feet in. Uh, now with these, they can come right out to the edge here. Uh, personally, I don't think that will be a very popular option because you do need a big stand to go with it. So I'll just show you around the back of the television first of all. Uh, you've got the switches, so you've got the on and off switch just took around the corner here. And you've got some of the channel up and down and volume up and down buttons. Uh, I've got the mains lead just at the bottom there. As we work our way across, uh, we've got the wall bracket fixings. Uh, so these centers are actually 30 centimeters by 30 centimeters. So as I say, a three by 300 fixing. Uh, most manufacturers tend to go with either a two by two or a four by 400, uh, but at least it, you know, being a three by three, that's, that's fine. Uh, it's very good that it's uh, in the, this part of the television. Uh, some brands are still insistent on having the fixings towards the top here. Uh, which can be very awkward, especially if you've had a wall bracket before. If you're replacing the TV, then that's certainly something to, to take note of, and that's a real plus point for this Panasonic. As we come around to this side, uh, I've got quite a few connections to, to go at. Uh, so first of all, at the top here, you've got the, the common interface card slot. Uh, then you've got quite a few different options. You've got the, the headphone subwoofer connection. Then we've got a couple of USB connections. You've got the fourth HDMI because the first three are located just underneath here. Uh, you've also got the AVN uh, Ethernet connection. Uh, clearly with the TV you have got Wi-Fi built in, uh, but sometimes if the Wi-Fi connection in your house isn't that great because you've got so many devices on it, then uh, quite a few people tend to hardwire it. Especially if you've got the router behind your TV, then you may as well hardwire it up to your TV. Uh, digital audio connection. Uh, you've got the first USB connection and then you've got the satellite connections here and then you've got the aerial connection under there. So there's a, there's a lot to go at. So I think what we need to do now is to get the TV switched on and start to set it up. So now I've got the TV plugged in and I've plugged the aerial lead in as well. 
Uh, you'll notice just at the bottom here, hopefully you can see that, there's a little red standby light. Uh, the button around the back that I showed you earlier, the on and off switch, when you press that then it does actually kill the power to the TV. Uh, it's something that a lot of people want to do, they want to turn the TV off at night, but they don't necessarily want to turn it off at the plug. Uh, this is the remote control that comes with the TV. Uh, Panasonic have made a specific type of remote for several years, uh, so it's quite, quite refreshing actually that they've changed the design. Uh, I suppose at the bottom You've just got the, the channel numbers, the uh, volume up and down, channel up and down. But more importantly, at the top here, you've got some of the popular apps. So you've got Netflix, Prime Video, YouTube, Rakuten TV, Freeview Play, and then My App. Uh, basically My App, so what you can do with that is you can actually select your favourite app. So if there's one that you, uh, for example, a, a sport app or weather app that you tend to use a lot, then you can actually program the remote to just go direct to that app. So what I want to do now is let's get it switched on. And what it will do is it will just go through the setup process. So yep, yeah, it's detected that I'm using the, the proper Panasonic remote control. Let's select the country. Let's go for, I will select home. Uh, and the reason I do that is because the, the way everything displays is quite different, whether you're in a shop or in a home setting, but I'll, I'll do it through the home. Uh, so what we want to do now is to set up the uh, connecting the internet. So, so all I did there is I just put the Wi-Fi router password in. Uh, now what we can do is you can actually select Freeview or Satellite. Uh, well, I've not got a satellite connection here, so I'm just going to select the Freeview. And what this will do is this will pick out the strongest channels and it'll put them in the right order. Uh, as it says, it normally takes about three minutes, so I suppose the best thing is go and, uh, go and stick the kettle on and we'll go and make a cup of coffee. So just before that finishes off, uh, I'll just explain about the processor that they use. So Panasonic have got several different processors, depending on the range of models. Uh, with this model, they, what they've decided to do is use the HCX AI processor. Now that's really one of the better ones that they use. Uh, and really what it does, I suppose to try and explain it, is it's trying to enhance the, the contrast in the TV um, and it's also enabling black images on the picture to be very black. And I know it sounds a bit odd uh, because you just think that a black image is black, but on a lot of the lower end uh, LED models, if you actually go into a showroom and see them, and especially if you look at an angle, then on some LED TVs, the, the viewing angle isn't that great. Uh, so it's certainly something I'd, I'd recommend. Go, go into a store and just have a look to see how good these are. Uh, because the black level on these OLED TVs are very, very good. Uh, a lot of people are still comparing OLED TVs to the old plasma TVs, where the old black levels were, were really, really good. And that's where LED TVs struggle. So the next thing, as far as the tuning, is to select the, I normally select the best signal quality. Uh, and then what it's doing is it will just reorder the channels uh, and put them in a certain order. So now that it's done that, uh, what it has done, it's brought this message up. Uh, basically, it's just saying that you need to regularly perform the panel maintenance process. Um, and please refrain from displaying still images and characters for long periods. Now, I suppose what they have found is that over, over the last couple of years, that if people have been having a static image on the TV, then you can almost get like a, a small amount of screen burn, uh, which isn't what you want. Uh, so I'm glad that they've done that. It's just really a warning for people to do that, so pressing confirm to say that we've read that message. Uh, I will show you how to do that maintenance in a, uh, in a moment. There is a huge amount of technology within the TV. Now one of the picture technologies to mention is what they call multi HDR format. And what that does, it doesn't matter what format of HDR that is inputted within the TV, it will actually adapt accordingly. So it doesn't matter whether it's Dolby Vision, uh, HLG could be HDR, HDR10+, uh, or the new HDR10 Plus Adaptive. Also, if you're into your gaming, then this has a feature called Game Mode Extreme, and that's really where you've got things like low input lag, your high frame rates, which can really help to enhance the gaming experience. So when you press the home button on the remote control, then it brings up these options at the bottom here. Uh, what you can do is you can actually set it up to how you want, so there might be certain apps that you, you're never going to use, so you can just get rid of them. 
but this is something called the Panasonic called My Home Screen 6. And uh, what you can do is if you just go down to the apps button here, so you'll see there's there's quite a few of the popular uh, catch-up services. Of course, we've got the ever-famous Prime Video, YouTube, and there's quite a few others to look at. Uh, but you've got, so when you press that, if you go into the apps market, then you can actually download other apps to the TV. Uh, so there might be, there's quite a few on there that, that are free. Uh, I won't go into it all now, but there's, there's a huge range. And what you'll find over time that new apps will be installed within the apps market, giving you the option to download them to your TV if you want to. And there are some paid ones as well. Uh, you have got a browser at the end here. Uh, I'll be honest, the browsers on a lot of TVs are not that great. Uh, I'd normally recommend uh, stick to your uh, either tablet um, or your laptop if you want to browse the internet. Um, but if you do want to use the browser, then I'd certainly recommend getting a wireless keyboard to go with it, rather than trying to use it through the remote control. Because when you're typing in a web address through the remote, then it does take a long time. As we go to the bottom of this screen, then you'll notice that you have got something called Audio Link. Uh, this enables you to connect uh, some Bluetooth devices to the TV. So it could be up to two pairs of Bluetooth headphones. Uh, also, you can connect Bluetooth speakers to it as well. So if you are gaming away, and if you didn't want to annoy the, the people around you, then just connect to a pair of the Bluetooth headphones. Uh, just to the right of this, you've also got voice control. So if you do use the either Google Assistant speakers or Amazon Alexa speakers, which a lot of people are now, then you can set that up through the TV so that you can enable certain voice features through the TV as well. When you press the guide button on the TV remote control, then it just shows you the, the guide and this is the all the programs that are on at the moment. So what you can do is you can scroll ahead if you want to, uh, just using the, the cursors in the middle, so you've got up and down, left and right. Uh, but what you can also do is you've also got something called Freeview Play. Uh, this is part of the catch-up TV service. Uh, so if you wanted to, say, go back in time, uh, what you can do, not literally go back in time, uh, but I mean if you want to go back and watch something that you've missed, I should rephrase that, uh, then you just press the, the left button on here and that will go back and then you can just catch up on any programs that you've missed. If I press the menu button on the TV, then it just brings up this bar along the bottom. Uh, you have got an option for subtitle on and off. Uh, although it's within the menu here, there is a separate button on the remote control. So if you do want subtitles, which quite a few people do, uh, then just press that. Uh, you've also got picture mode. So you've got normal and dynamic. This is in this main menu bar. Uh, there are quite a few other picture settings and I'll just show you those in a moment. Uh, sound mode. So sound, clearly we've already got a brilliant picture. Uh, what you want to do is you want to make sure you've got a really good sound to go with it because that is, is the other half of the viewing experience. Uh, again, technology, there's a huge amount of technology with the sound. You've got things like Dolby Atmos that this TV supports. Uh, but you have got uh, some sound mode settings. So you've got things like standard, music, speech, stadium, uh, user, where you can actually select how you want the the sound to be on the TV. Uh, surround, do you want to have a surround sound experience? Uh, I suppose a lot of people think, well, yes, of course I do, but sometimes you don't. Uh, sometimes you just want the, the TV sound to be as, as standard, but you have got things like Stadium Surround, Cinema Surround, Cinema Surround Pro, Dolby Surround, so there's a, a lot you can choose from. Uh, you have got this option on here, Low Energy Viewing, uh, I'm, I must admit, the it does seem to darken the picture each time. I'm not really sure why you'd want to do that. Uh, so personally, I'd leave that off. I suppose the best way I'd explain it, how many people go to a Lamborghini garage and that's a fuel consumption of the car? Well, that's not going to happen. Uh, but what you have got is you have got the, the main menu on the left-hand side here. So with these, you have got the, the main picture settings. Uh, so as I mentioned, you've got, there's, there's a huge range of things to choose from. Uh, I won't go into, into everything because there's, I'd, uh, I'd be here all day, but as you, you've got things like the, the noise reduction, uh, resolution remaster. So there's, there's, there's a huge amount to, to go through. Uh, also with the sound, uh, if you just want to select, say, your, your own bass and treble controls 
then you've still got the option to do that. As mentioned earlier, we've got Dolby Atmos on the TV. You'd normally leave that switched on. Uh, the bass boost is a good option. Uh, you can just enhance the, the bass through the TV, uh, but you've also got the option through the, uh, one of the connections around the back that you can actually connect a bass speaker to the TV. Uh, now, a lot of manufacturers uh, have, have had this option for several years, but they don't really shout about it. Uh, some people decide that they don't want necessarily having speakers going around the room, like the full surround sound systems, and some people don't even want the soundbar because uh, soundbars can really improve the sound quality of the TV uh, but because the speakers in this TV are actually very good anyway uh, then you can just find by adding the bass speaker that can really enhance the sound through the TV as well. I did mention earlier I'll show you where the panel maintenance option was. Uh, now if you go into the picture settings uh, then it's towards the bottom uh, it is in the screen settings and then it's the panel maintenance, so it's there, it's quite... It's not a hidden option, uh, but it's certainly not at the, at the forefront of the options here. Now what this is, I suppose, saying is that, so turn the TV off, uh, it completes in around 80 minutes, so it does take, it, it takes some time to do it, so if you are thinking of doing this, then what you don't want to do is put it on before you, your favourite football match or, or soap is going to start, because uh, what you don't want to do is you can't stop it, once it started the process. Um, but yeah, so that's something that we'd recommend. I suppose manufacturers recommend doing it probably every every couple of months. I suppose it depends on how often you're watching the TV and also the content that you're watching. Uh, if some of the content that you're watching, which can be some of the online content, are where it's got static, static images on the TV, on the screen, then I'd recommend doing it a little bit more often. Uh, or you can also do it when the TV's next turned off. Uh, I suppose that's the that's probably the best option. So clearly you decide that you're gonna turn the TV off, then it will start the panel maintenance. If you're thinking of buying one of these TVs, I've provided a link below to show you where to get one at a competitive price. I hope you enjoyed this quick video on the Panasonic TX48JZ980. Uh, I've tried to cover some of the basic features that the TV offers. There is a huge amount. I could talk for hours about the TV and go into all different demonstrations, uh, but there is quite a lot of uh, content uh, that I could also show as well. But I just really want to give you an overview of the TV. Uh, if you have got any comments or questions on the TV, uh, so if you have got one of these, then let me know what you think, one of the JZ980 TVs, because I'd always appreciate the feedback. If you have got any questions on it, then you know, we keep it on display so I can come and, uh, come and have a look for you. Uh, but yeah, if you've got any questions or comments, then leave those below. Uh, I'd normally say please subscribe to my YouTube channel, just give us a quick thumbs up. Anyway, thanks for watching.